Hello and welcome to our channel, Moving Faster with Parkinson. Today we are going to talk about a very common topic in the clinic. What to do in the setting of psychosis. Uh, when I say psych psychosis, I mean delusions, hallucinations, illusions. What we can do with this distortion of the reality that affect approximately 40% of the patient with Parkinson's disease. And it not just affect the patient, also the family in general, causing a lot of distress on them. Remember that also increase the probability of poor outcomes, increase the probability of you having a fall, increase the probability of nursing home placement. And also hallucinations are highly associated with cognitive impairment. Why is this happening? Well, the short answer is we are not completely sure. Remember that in Parkinson's disease, there are multiple uh, chemicals in balance, multiple chemical changes in the brain. It's not just dopamine. There are other chemicals in the brain, such as acetylcholine, which is related with a memory circuit um, and some visual processing, also serotonin, which is highly associated with depression, anxiety when it's low, but also associated with visual uh, processing issues. So when this is not working well, you would have hallucinations. How we can make the diagnosis? Number one, you need to have the diagnosis of Parkinson's disease. That's the first step. Number two, you need to have symptoms for at least one month. Number three, you need to have one of the following symptoms. Number one, illusions, which is defined as a misinterpretation. For example, you, you are seeing the branch of a tree as a cat. So you are having a misinterpretation. That's illusion. The other one is a false sense of presence, for example, Patients sometimes tell you that they are seeing things in the corner of the visual field, okay? Seeing like a person, seeing like an animal. Then they will, when they look, there's nothing. That's a, a false sense of presence. The other one is hallucinations. Hallucination is the most common one, usually visual hallucinations. So seeing things that nobody else is seeing, okay? The other one is delusion, which is very rare approximately 5% of the psychosis in the setting of Parkinson, but very distressful, especially for a family. What to do in this setting? Well, we divide this in three steps. Step number one, you need to have the correct diagnosis, right? That's the first thing. Otherwise you will get everything wrong. Correct diagnosis. Number two, if you start having hallucinations, if your father, if your mother, if your family members start having hallucina hallucinations, make sure that infections process is ruled out. For example, urinary tract infection, and pneumonia, that kind of things might cause hall hallucinations in susceptible patients. Also metabolic process, side effect of a new medication, you need to check the, the, the medication list. Make sure that you have a good eye exam by the eye doctor, by the ophthalmologist, okay? Very important. If, if they recommend you to wear glasses, wear your glasses. Evaluate your sleep pattern, okay? Remember, insomnia might actually induce confusion, memory issues, and hallucinations in susceptible patients. Tell your doctor to review your non-Parkinson medication. Like I said before, many medication might cause hallucinations as well. Before blaming Parkinson, you need to check your medication list. Now, now step two, you need to review your Parkinson disease and drugs, okay? All the medication that we use to improve your motor symptoms might actually cause hallucinations, one more than others. And this is the order that you should taper down if hallucinations are affecting your life, your function.
Okay. The first one is um, medications that we call anticholinergic medication. Let me, let me give you an example. Number one, um, something that we call uh, three hexaphenyl, uh, which is artin, um, benzotropine. That's another one. That that's the first two medication that we should taper down to eliminate uh, from your list. The second one would be amantadine. So you are taking amantadine and you're having hallucinations, you might need to taper down the medication. The next one will um, is uh, what we call the MAOB type inhibitor, such as selangelin or, or risangelin, which is acylate. The next one will be to taper down the dopamine agonist. Uh, for example, Riquid, which is uh, ropiranol, Ramipasol, which is Mirapex, or the patch, um, the patch that we use sometimes that might cause hallucinations. But remember, this is the order, okay? Next one would be medications that we call COMT inhibitors, such as Intacapon, or the new one, uh, which is uh, Opicapon, okay? Then, if you still have hallucinations after you stop all these medication, then you might need to try to decrease the doses of levodopa without affecting your function significantly. Step number three, medication that we use to treat psychosis. Um, I tend first to try what we call cholinesterase inhibitors. For example, rivastigmine, which is excellent. Um, I use more rivastigmine because we have more data in the setting of Parkinson's disease. But that doesn't mean that Aricep, Donapacil might work too. So I use those medications in the setting of uh, cognitive issues, memory issues, um, as a first choice. Then I use uh, or try to get approval uh, for Pimabanserine, which is the only medication approved by FDA for this problem, for psychosis in the setting of Parkinson's disease. Uh, patients tolerate the medication pretty well. Uh, remember that all of these medications, this, uh, these three medications, Pimabanserine, Quetapine, and Clozapine, they have a black box. Okay, so it's very important that your doctor discuss with you about this black box, which means that increased mortality um, in demented patient, typically from cardiac or infections process. Remember that you need to balance uh, with the quality of life implication if you don't treat severe hallucination. So life is about risk. Um, remember that uh, risks are always would be, would be present. Life is about risk, uh, but you need to take risk, calculated risk. Now, going back to Nuplacid, uh, Nuplacid take time to work. So I usually wait approximately six to eight weeks before saying that Nuplacid or Pima Bansering is not doing anything for you, okay? So don't give up, try at least two months before stopping the medication, okay? Now, the other choice, the second choice, <clears throat> actually the third choice in this case, will be the use of cytoquil or quetapine. We don't have good evidence, um, but we use it because we don't have too many uh, options. Uh, the good thing about cytoquil is help you to sleep. Um, so decrease of probability maybe to have hallucination, maybe this is why what is causing, um, but uh, it's not too, too effective. The other one that might be more effective that, that Seroquel is clozapine. However, clozapine, there is a problem here that approximately 1% of the patient might end up having what we call agranulocytosis, which is having very low white blood cell count predisposing you to have a very severe infections. So you have to be careful. Those patients need to, we need to monitor a CVC, a white blood cell count 
frequently, very frequently, especially during the beginning of the process. So this is not an easy treatment, uh, but tend to be uh, pretty effective as well. Um, these are tips for caregivers. Number one, you can actually put some night uh, lights on the wall. That might help to so, for some patients, okay? Always stay calm and be reassuring. So, you, you know, calm down. Do not fight. Do not argue with the patient. Do not, do not say there is no cat. It's better to say, I will take the cat outside. There is no point to fight. Um, always ask them about hallucinations. Always ask them because they are not going to tell you. They would always try to minimize the symptoms. And that might be because the stigma and bizarre nature of some hallucinations. They don't want to talk about that. So you need to ask them. If you like this video, don't forget to share, subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much. See you soon.